There's a place in Puget Sound that disproves the old adage, still waters run deep. That place is Admiralty Inlet. And here, fast-moving turbulent waters run deep with every ebb and flow of the tides. The force of those tidal currents is why Snohomish PUD is assessing Admiralty Inlet as a site for tidal generated electrical power. Alex, we are acquiring data. Over. And helping with that assessment is a team from the University of Washington. We'll have everything in the water in the next 10 minutes or so and give you a call. A one of a kind team, the Northwest Marine Renewable Resource Center. We are the only national marine center that is doing research on tidal energy. The larger project here is to study the, the tidal currents in Admiralty Inlet. And so most of what we've been doing here is measuring the currents themselves. This whole project is being configured for data generation. And the reason is because we just don't have data really anywhere in the world, and certainly not here in Puget Sound, relative to the, the technical, the economic, the environmental, and the social viability of tidal energy. The project planned for Admiralty Inlet will be like no other tidal energy site in the world. Here, the turbines will sit on the seafloor, their power generating blades turned by the flow of incoming and outgoing tides. Other existing tidal energy sites artificially funnel the tides or send them over a dam. These are freestanding underwater devices that simply capture the energy from moving water molecules just like windmills capture the, the energy from moving air molecules. For University of Washington researchers, the first order of business was measuring the speed and direction of the tidal currents. What they found astounded them. The power of nature is what we're seeing here and what we're quantifying here. Um, it, it's really impressive. And the, the currents we've measured here have surprised me even though I knew what we were going to look for. In Admiralty Inlet, we've clocked currents up to six or seven knots, which is more than sufficient for tidal energy. But the very characteristics that make the inlet good for tidal energy make it difficult to study. To gather data over the long term, the UW team needed to place instruments on the seafloor and leave them there. So they modified commercially available underwater tripods, adding a thousand pounds of ballast, then loaded them with instruments. Here, it's about 200 feet deep. And so everything has to be done remotely. We have to lower things and recover things remotely. So it makes it much more difficult. The team dubbed the tripods sea spiders. They sit on the seafloor for three months recording data. Coming up. Then they're retrieved, the data is downloaded and batteries are changed. The spiders are cleaned, then redeployed. The first sea spider carried instruments to measure tidal currents and underwater noise. But it wasn't long before other researchers and public agencies added their instruments to the package. The primary instrument is a current profiler, uh, which we measure the, the tidal currents with. But we also have hydrophones to measure the noise. We have water quality samplers to measure the temperature, the salinity, the dissolved oxygen. We have fish tag receivers, and we have specialized hydrophones to listen for marine mammals. Uh, this is actually an instrument that's uh, part of the Department of Ecology program to monitor dissolved oxygen in Puget Sound. Coupled with research cruises, the data gathered so far is rewriting not only our knowledge of Puget Sound, but the best practices for tidal energy development. For instance, tidal turbines generate noise. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, has decibel limits in place to protect marine mammals, especially orca. If there's too much noise, orca can't communicate with each other. The UW's research discovered existing background noise from shipping traffic often exceeds NOAA's limits. NOAA has been really interested in uh, just the information we have on shipping traffic at the site because they don't really understand, uh, at least before we started the project, uh, how much noise uh, shipping was generating. We already have a lot of noise in the ocean and this project would add some more noise, so it, that's why it's a concern. So we're trying to understand, we're trying to quantify what that effect might be. To reduce the effect of turbine noise on Orca, the turbines will be shut down as the pods make their regular trips through Admiralty Inlet. University of Washington researchers are now testing methods to hear vocalizations of approaching Orca. Alex's laptop has 929.50 at the moment. Yes. Great, okay, start at 9.30 on the mark, so five seconds, over. What we were doing today when we had the fireboat uh, going out and playing back different calls at different distances and with different amounts of activity near the Robertson, was to try to get uh, at least a handle on, on what sort of ranges we could expect an automatic dis uh, detection system to isolate a killer whale call and, and say, yep, I heard a killer whale, shut down the turbines. 
given federal permitting and economics, the Admiralty Inlet tidal turbines may never be installed. But the research and the methods designed by the University of Washington team are setting the bar worldwide on how to develop the untapped power of the tides. I can say uh, with good certainty that other places in the world haven't collected this sort of environmental base baseline or resource baseline before they've gone in the water. It's very much a research project and I think they've taken the right approach to that rather than just barreling ahead with a full tidal energy farm to do a research project, understand what's there and then understand how best to move forward. Around the U.S. and also around the world, people look to the work we're doing at UW and say, okay, this is how those guys are doing it, this is the right way to do it.